so next part is a rheological diagram what is the meaning of rheological diagram that we'll discuss in short you can say it's a types of fluids which you can see in a day-to-day -day life so here you can see a one we'll start with this diagram that is this right side diagram where you can learn what are the different types of fluids in real life with their specific technical names so x-axis you can see this is du by dy which we learned now which is velocity gradient or rate of deformation and this is a type I have represented on x-axis that is ideal fluid whereas on y-axis is ideal solid another term you can see is Newtonian fluid so we'll start with the first type Newtonian fluid what is the meaning of Newtonian fluid Newtonian fluid is the fluid which obeys the Newton's law of viscosity which is shear stress is directly proportional to rate of shear strain so this is the relation of this du by dy and this tau on y-axis there is a shear stress so this diagram is shear stress versus rate of deformation du by dy so logically this Newtonian fluid which obeys the Newton's laws the straight which is most of the general fluids comes into the category like water air kerosene glycerine so most of the major fluid comes into the category of Newtonian now except this all these all other fluids are non Newtonian which does not obey Newton's law of viscosity which is called as rheological study so hence the name rheological diagram so the study of non-Newtonian fluid is rheology so corresponding diagram rheological diagram so basically it's a types of fluid so what is the meaning of ideal fluid so we'll start with first what is ideal fluid so as we know what is ideal fluid for this you can say it is on x-axis that means there is no y-axis term means the fluid for which the viscosity is zero means mu is zero so ideally it is not possible to have any real life fluid for which the mu is zero so this is again an ideal case there is no existence of any fluid which is having viscosity zero means no viscosity fluid so ideal concept this is ideal fluid when viscosity is zero that fluid is called as ideal fluid means no shear stress so tau with zero so this line indicates ideal fluid so first we run with Newtonian second ideal fluid now next category is non-Newtonian then all are non-Newtonian fluids first one is let's say this dilatant dilatant and pseudoplastic fluids so I'll just explain one by one first what is the meaning of this all are non-Newtonian both the difference between this na nature of the graph this dilatant fluid for which this n is greater than 1 and for this pseudoplastic this n is, is less than 1 both are non-Newtonian fluid but the nature of this curve and this curve is different so that's hence the name is given pseudoplastic so we'll have a lot of real life example for this type of fluids this n represent fluid behavior index means how particular fluid behave their corresponding index so if this index is equals to 1 that is it follows the Newton's law of viscosity so that is Newtonian fluid if that viscosity index uh, fluid behavior index is greater than 1 it is uh, dilatant fluid if it is less than 1 it is pseudoplastic fluid so you can have some real life example for it um, this is another diagram to represent the same idea the pseudoplastic is example is paint where for which you can see uh, the difference between the water glycerine honey and the paint that is by viscosity term same this pseudoplastic means example is a paint for which this index is less than 1 whereas dilatant 
the example is this water plus corn starch so most of the times the rice the starch also with the water that is also a good example of dilatant fluids so dilatant fluids are the basically starch corn and the water you can say the com combination such fluid comes into the category of dilatant non newtonian fluid why because the nature of this curve this nature and this one both are not linear both are non linear and difference with this factor index which is n which is less than 1 for pseudoplastic that is for paint whereas for dilatant that is a combination or you can say the starch corn and water plus starch corn this is is we will get the index is greater than 1 now next is last two which is very important that is bingham plastic and ideal fluids so for which you can see the difference is again they are non newtonian fluids means this bingham plastic and this plastic fluid basically so they are plastic fluid it passes through origin means it is this tau is and du by dy the proportions is non linear so it is plastic in nature so hence the name plastic fluid whereas bingham plastic bingham plastic example is here you can see it's a ketchup all the ketchup you find in your home that is example of ideal or bingham plastic which is also called as viscoplastic this all fluids are categorized with respect to their viscosity or resistance to the fluid layer so this example of ideal bingham plastic it represent it requires initial stress let's say this factor from zero to this point it requires this initial yield stress and then it gives the linear relation between tau and du by dy so that's example of bingham fluid that is example ketchup similarly here another example you can see this diagram that is ideal fluid this is ideal fluid means for viscosity is zero then newtonian fluid that is example air water glycerin kerosene dilatant non newtonian fluid example water plus corn starch again non linear nature pseudoplastic example play, paint slurry you can say plastic fluids it shows a non linear relation again it passes through origin means it is having a rate of deformation and the tau they are indeed linear proportionate non linear nature for this two and last one is bingham viscoplastic example is tomato ketchup or any ketchup you can say for which the viscosity is slightly greater than water and all so this is a very important classification or the types of fluid which we can say a rheological diagram for all the fluids.